Hi, I'm Tom and Homi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration video, I'm going to show you how to configure NVMe over TCP connectivity between Dell EMC Power Store and an ES6 host and perform some day-to-day -day operations. Power Store was built from ground up for modern storage media. In the initial release, NVMe was used within the appliance, while over the network, the transport mechanism was standard SCSI protocol. Parstor OS 2.0 extended NVMe benefits across the network with NVMe over fiber channel, while Parstor OS 2.1 now extends NVMe benefits across the network with NVMe over TCP. NVMe over TCP is much more efficient, parallel, and scalable than SCSI. It is designed to make an external networked array feel like direct attached storage to the hosts. This support allows almost all the benefits of NVMe over Fabric while radically simplifying the networking requirements. The best thing about this release is how easy it is to activate the new capability. First, it's just a simple software update, so you won't need any additional power store hardware. And Hosts that support NVMe can now use the protocol to talk to PowerStore, while SCSI hosts continue as if nothing changed. PowerStore and the network itself can handle both protocols. VMware announced the support of the NVMe TCP storage protocol with the release of VMware v 37 Update 3. So now, let's jump to the lab and see how to configure it with PowerStore. So as you can see, I have a vCenter server running version 7 update 3. From the main screen, we navigate to one of the E6i hosts and then click on the configure tab. Like software SCSI adapter, VMware recommends to allocate a dedicated VMK for NVMe over TCP traffic. We select the VMK and click edit settings. Here, we enable NVMe over TCP service and click OK. Next, we need to create a new NVMe over TCP software adapter. We navigate to the Storage Adapters tab and add a new software NVMe over TCP software adapter. Then, we choose the physical NIC and click OK. By navigating to Parser Manager and clicking on the networking settings, we can see that the ports are already configured with both iSCSI and NVMe over TCP protocol. We have a global discovery IP, as well as dedicated IPs for each node. Now that we know PowerStore IPs, let's go back to the v3 client and click on the new software NVMe over TCP software adapter that I've just created. We click on the controllers and select Add Controller. Next, we specify the global IP and the port used for NVMe over TCP traffic, port A009. We click on Discover Controllers, and then we add the Parser Controllers to our adapter on the E6i host. We go back to Parser Manager and click on Head Host. We set the name and select the operating system and click Next. Here, we select NVMe Protocol, and then we get a list of the available hosts we can add. We select the E6i host and then click Add Host. Now, Let's create a new volume. We navigate to the Volumes tab and click on Create Volume. We provide a name, select a category and application, set the size, and click Next. Here, we check the NVMe radio button and select our ES6i host. By navigating to the Storage Adapters tab, you will automatically see a new volume appears as a namespace. In NVMe Storage Array, a namespace is a storage volume backed by some quantity of non-violent memory. In the context of ES6i host, the namespace is a storage device, or a LAN. NVMe controller is the target manager on the array. A controller is associated with one or more NVMe namespaces and provides an access path between the ES6i host and the namespaces in the storage array. Now, we can create a new VMFS data store on the volume that we've just allocated. We right-click on the ES6i host and select New Data Store from the drop-down menu. 
We choose VMFS and select our volume. Space Reclamation is supported with NVMe devices as well, so we can leave it with the default Space Reclamation value and then click Next and Finish to create a data store. For NVMe devices, VMware provides the High Performance Plugin, HPP, to improve the performance of the stored devices on your ES6A hosts. The HPP replaces the NMP for high-speed devices such as NVMe devices. The HPP is the default plugin that claims NVMe over TCP targets. Within ES6i, the NVMe targets are emulated and presented to users as SCSI targets. The HPP supports only active-active and implicit Alua targets. The High Performance plugin uses Path Selection Schemas, PSS, to manage multipathing, just as NMP uses PSP. HPP offers the following PSS options. Fixed, use a specific preferred path. Load balance round robin. This is the default PSS. After 1000 IOPS, or 10 megabytes, whichever comes first, the path is switched in round robin fashion. This is equivalent of NMP PSP round robin. Load balance IOPS. When 1000 IOPS are reached, VMware will switch the path to the one that has the least number of outstanding IOs. Load balance bytes. When 10 megabytes are reached, VMware will switch paths to the one that has the least number of outstanding bytes. And load balance latency. This is the same mechanism available with NMP. VMware evaluates the path and decides which one has the lowest latency. HPP can be managed in v3 client as well as E6 CLI commands. We recommend using the default load balance round robin and change the IOPS per path from 1000 to 1. As I've mentioned, with NVMe, there's no need for rescans. If I increase the volume size on PowerStore, the array instantly informs the connected host about the operation. So all we have to do is to refresh the screen and then we can increase the data store size. Whether or not you have an immediate plan for NVMe over TCP, this capability shows the flexibility and investment protection PowerStore provides. As Dell continues to lead the adoption for new technologies, your roadmap is in good hands with the adaptable PowerStore platform. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.